Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Sherry Hamilol and today we're going to be talking about a very, very cool like tip or technique that I suggest everyone does. So one of the things that we always struggle with in the 3D world is the fact that we need to have a lot of time to create a lot of things, right? And sometimes, especially once you get more and more into the industry, the time that you get to do other stuff becomes less and less available. In my case, for instance, if I wanted to model a car like this one, right now, due to all of the things that I'm doing, such as the new premium course, have you check it out down here in the description, I don't have the time to do so. However, I did do this car several years ago. This was one of my first student projects back in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. And one of the best advices that I can give you is don't do extra work. If you have something like this right here that works, it's a good model, might not be the most like amazing model ever, but it works. Well, why not just give it a little bit of a makeover and create something that looks really, really cool. So if we look online, let me go here real quick and look for car renders. You're going to see that one of the most common sort of like things is this sort of like side view where the car is in the middle of a garage, like something like this. And uh, you get all of the very, very nice reflections on top of it, like something like this is, is very, very common. So I'm going to show you right now in this video how to do that. First, I'm going to grab the whole thing and I'm going to sign a new material because this guy was using very old materials. It was using mentor way materials. So I'm going to use a AI standard material. I'm going to uh, now go into poly modeling and I'm going to create a new plane. And I'm going to scale that plane so that we have our, our very nice ground plane, something like this. It's going to be very, very, very big. This is very important. We want a very big element because we're going to be playing around with some of the effects. Now, one of the things that I always mention about rendering is that especially if you have very shiny metals, you should have some sort of environment. Otherwise, the reflections that you get are not as good. So it could be a studio environment right there, or we can go for something like a tunnel or something that looks a little bit interesting, like this, like uh, abandoned uh, like warehouses and stuff like that. Those could give interesting effects. One of the things that you want to have, though, is you want to have it as clean and as, as simple as possible in the light department. What do I mean by this? If you take a look at this, this dancing hall is perfect. So I'm just going to download this one right here. So if you take a look at the, at the examples that you get here from the spheres, you want to make sure that you are not using anything that has a very harsh shadow because getting rid of that harsh shadow can be very complicated later on. So I'm going to copy and paste that into my project here. I already have a, a source project. I don't think I have set it up. So I'm going to say file set project and let's go to 2023 Ave Leo. And there we go. We set that one. So we're going to go to Arnold lights and we're going to add the Skydome light. As you can see, the scale of the Skydome light is like going around the car. The scale of the Skydome light actually doesn't matter. It could be like scale zero and still would work. And here on the color, we're going to plug in a file load to get this very cool dancing hall HDRI. There we go. Now, a couple of uh, setups here for our rendering engine so that we can get the uh, fast, uh, quick renders. So the first thing is I'm going to go to the options right here. I'm going to change the size to full HD, so HD 1080. And then on the system, I'm going to change this to GPU. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go to rendering. We're going to create a new camera. We're going to call this camera shot cam. I'm going to go panels, look through selected, and we're going to find a nice like shot here for the car. So let's go for something like this. There we go. We want the car to be like the main focus of our element. I think a focal length of 35 is fine. However, if you want a flatter image, we can bring this to 55. Take a look at the wheels. Look at how the wheels have a little bit of perspective to them. And if we increase this to 55, the wheels are going to get uh, rid of some of that perspective. It's going to be a little bit flatter. If you want a super, super flat image, you can go all the way to 90, for instance. And we're going to have a really, really, really flat effect. So whatever you decide, that's it's fine. I think actually 90 looks pretty, pretty damn cool. Now on the HDRI, I'm going to go all the way down and I'm going to bring the camera visibility all the way down. So I don't want to see the HDRI. I want to see a black background in this case. Another thing we could do here is we can actually grab this edge over here and create a um, like a soft uh, transition. Now, a very important thing here, see this clipping that's going on? This is because the scale of the of the scene is real world scale. So the car measures the amount of the, the distance that the car should measure. And usually the cameras inside of Maya are set up so that we go into centimeters. So I'm going to select the camera here and on the near clip plane, I'm going to set this to one and the far clip plane, I'm just going to add one zero. And that pretty much like gives us uh, enough room to, to do this. 
I'm going to grab this guy right here, and then I'm going to go poly modeling. We are going to bevel a lot of segments to keep this round. And there we go. Uh, finally, I'm going to save the scene. So I'm going to save scene as. Because this was from an old, old project. Am I saving normally? I'm not sure what I'm doing. There we go. Let's go file, save scene as. And let's call this uh, Mercedes Renter. That's fine. So, yeah, now we're going to go to uh, render, Arno, render, and uh, let's see what we get. Uh, let's go, of course, to the shot cam. So we render from the shot cam. It's doing a very like fast texture conversion because right now we don't have any textures. We just have the car. And look at that. That already looks way, 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 way better. But we're going to make this even better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the HDRI and I'm going to lower the intensity. One of the cool things I like about uh, Maya is that we have exposure and we can use negative values. So if I go, for instance, to a minus four, it might seem like we're turning it off. But when you like do the exponential of that thing, you get a positive number. So you just go really, really, really low. So minus four is a little bit too too low. So let's go minus three. That's a little bit better. Like I just want to have a little bit of bounce light going into the scene. But I don't want this light to be the main light of our element. Actually, I think minus three was better. There we go. Now that we have this, usually for car renders like this, one of the things that we do is we grab a very big area light on the top. So I'm going to press uh, papa, over here, Arnold, lights, and we're going to create an area light. We're going to scale this area light quite big, rotate this 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees in this case. And we could even like scale it should be able to scale it. Can we not scale it anymore? Huh, that's weird. We should be able to scale it non-uniformly. Let's reset the tool. There we go. There we go. So we make a long, like big area light right here. Let's bring it lower. And um, let's start with a high exposure, something like a 15. I don't think it's going to be good enough, but still, let's try that. Yeah, so you can see we don't get the, the color that we want. So let's go a little bit bigger. We're in real world scale, so we might need bigger numbers. There we go. 20 seems to be doing a really nice job. We're not getting a we're not getting a like a, like a super exposure. So it's 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 really, really good. Normally I would tell you guys to go for this sort of um let's say, uh, realistic uh, renders where light has a little bit of color to it, like a little bit of temperature, like this warm light that I have or this cool light that I have right here. It gives this sort of like cinematic view, right? But in this case, especially like Mercedes has always been like like sleek, simple, like just, like just right. So I want to keep it as clean and as simple as possible as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. As you can see, we get a, a very, very nice light right here. So it might be worth to have a sort of like a rim light. So I'm going to go Arnold lights. Let's add another area light. Bring this to the back. And this area light is going to be hitting the back part of the car, of the car right here. So that when we see the render, we see a little bit of rim light over here. Let's set this to 20. And usually when I'm doing rim lights, I like to change the color to a very obvious color, like maybe even like pink, just to see where the light is going to be influencing. There we go. See that? So now I know that that's where the light is going to be hitting. I see how much light is bleeding onto the ground. So right now this seems, this seems really good. So I'm just going to set this back to white. And as you can see, that gives me an extra rim light right there. I'm going to stop the render. I'm going to control D, bring this guy forward and rotate this so that it's facing the car. We render and there we go. Look at how nice this one looks. Now this one's a little bit too close, I think. Compared to, to this one, you can see that the distances. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit or bring the exposure down so that we don't have a lot as, as much light contribution on the scene. And look at how nice this is looking. Not bad, right? Not bad for just a very, very, very simple render. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the materials. So when I modeled this car back in the day, I actually like grouped everything into like easy, easy to follow like elements, as you can see right here. So we got the grill. We got the wheels, so everything is like in the in simple materials. I think we're just gonna have three materials for this one. We're gonna have the black material, of course, the the main like elements, and then we're gonna have a chrome material and maybe just like a cloth material for this one. One option is to go into substance and uh, like texture the whole thing. I do have UVs for this element; they're not perfect, and I, if I remember correctly, I was using UDIMs with this guy. So you're gonna see that. The UVs, yeah, as you can see, they're not perfect. There's a lot of wasted space. This was one of my first projects back in the day. But um, that doesn't mean that we can't use some, some cool stuff. So I'm going to grab this guy right here. And just like the, the easy ones to grab all of this guy, this guy, this guy. Let's grab this guy over here. 
course, on the other side as well. I'm going to assign new material. Let's go Arnold. And Arnold has a really cool one. That's the car paint. So I'm going to add the AI car paint. And the color, instead of being red, is going to be black. Okay. We can even go, I think this one was like a, like a dark blue. So we're going to go for this sort of like dark blue. And the cool thing about this uh, element right now is that if we render, we're going to get a very, very, very cool tone all over the place. Look at that. Look at that beautiful like reflections that we're getting across the car. This sort of like long reflections that's coming again from the top light. And that's the kind of things that make the element or our asset look very, very, very sleek. And one of the things that I like about this car um, element is, or car texture is that we get this very, very cool sort of like flaky material on top of everything. So I'm going to keep it that sort of like blue. Let me let me open again the the old uh, project because in the old project they had some reference images. Um, Arch of two. There we go. Give me one second. Right here, almost there, almost there. I'm just looking for the for the source images to know which parts were which material. It's a very old hard drive that I'm accessing. That's when it's very. Okay, well, you can see the reference actually was white, uh, but we're going to use, or I'm going to use this image to know which parts were chrome and things like that. So, yeah, now we're going to go for the for the chrome area. Well, let's do the wheels real quick. So, I'm just going to grab the wheels. Those are easy. Assign new material. Arnold. AI standard surface. I'm going to call this M tires. The color is going to be white. The roughness is going to be really high on the specular. Probably not as like a little bit light or something like that. And then um, actually white doesn't look half bad. So let's go white. I'm going to go to the car paint and let's go like this or like beige white, something like that. We can even like sample the exact color. There we go. That's the exact color from the from the reference picture. So now if we render, this is going to change the, the whole look quite a bit. Look at that. We get this very, very nice, like, white color. I still think it's a little bit too gray. So I'm going to push it a little bit more towards the whites. There we go. Now it might be a good idea also to go into the HDRI, to our little panel here, and just increase the exposure a little bit, especially because white colors really need a lot of light to, to really look white. So there we go. And now let's go for the chrome material. So I'm going to grab all of the elements that I remember were made out of chrome, like all of that bumper, all of the grill, well, not the wheels, um, wheel cylinders. What the hell is that? I guess it was some, oh, it's like the dog, lower portions right there. And then this guy, this guy, all of these details right here. This guys, this guys. This was a very fun project. I remember it was the first car, like the full car that I modeled, and uh, it was really, really fun, really, really challenging. Because one of the things that we had to be very careful about was to make sure that the topology and everything was as, as clean as nice as possible. So the teacher was very, very, very. What's the word? Like he was very careful to make sure that we <laughs> we were doing things right and not taking any any shortcuts. I think this is like rubber, so I'm gonna leave those as rubber, and then we just grab all of these pieces right here. Ideally, we would have a selection to to make this a lot uh, faster. This is such an old project that I I need to do this manually. There we go that one. I think that one as well. Mm -hmm. And then this front like, headlights. I'm going to add some lights to those headlights as well in just a second. It's going to look really, really nice. There we go. I think that's it. I think that's all of the Chrome stuff. So right click, assign new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. And this one, we're going to make this metal. And the roughness, we can keep it, I mean, depending on how like intense or not we want it, we can just give it a little bit of effect. And as you can see, it's going to give us this very, very cool chrome metal effect everywhere. Let's go for the hood. I think that's one's a very important one. So assign new materials, Arnold, AI standard surface. It's going to be a dark hood with a high roughness, again, simulating sort of like cloth. There we go. That's perfect. Gives us this sort of like a 
fussy effect. We can actually add a little bit of fussy effect if we go to the uh, sheen. The sheen is this like um, like um, as you can see right there. It's kind of like like a velvet look that we can give the the whole thing, and it makes it very very cool, but very rough as well. We can like modify how much we want, but that's gonna give us a a different sort of texture for the whole thing. Now, finally, the windows. So I'm gonna oh actually this guys are supposed to be chrome as well. Look at the attention to detail that I had back in the day. My God, I can't believe I, I... It took me like several weeks. So modeling something like this is definitely... It's definitely time consuming. There we go. Make sure to rename your stuff. So... Because if we if we miss a point or something, we want to make sure to... To select the, the proper material uh, quickly. And now with the windows. So for this windows right here, I'm going to make them like tinted windows. So I'm going to assign them new material. Arnold AI standard shift. It's not going to be glass. It's just going to be a dark, like shiny, shiny material, like quite shiny. So that when we see the reflection, it looks like this. Uh, right now, since the shadow is coming from the top, we're not really seeing any reflection. We can increase the roughness a little bit. Uh, what else can we do? Change the IOR. There we go. I'm going to bring the IOR down. So they will start looking a little bit like glass, glass effect. Let's bring the, so we can start seeing a little bit of the reflection right there. Just a little bit. Again, they're gonna look a little bit more like tinted windows, but usually in this sort of like car renders, you don't really see that thing as much. And then the rubber, which we have several things made out of rubber, it's gonna be all of this guys right here. That guy right there, that guy right there. So sign the material, Arnold, AI standard. I'm just gonna increase the roughness here. Let's call this M rubber. And there we go. So now if we take a render, we're gonna be seeing a very, very cool effect. I think we definitely can make this a little bit darker so that they like have a, a slight different effect from the uh, from the rest of the elements. Now I mentioned I was gonna show you the lights. So on the lights, on all of this guys right here is the glass we're going to sign a new material arnold ai standard surface this is going to be glass i'm going to turn on transmission all the way up and uh and probably no i think the roughness is fine i don't want them to be like super super clean let's create another camera so i'm going to panels look to select it i'm going to create another camera right here so we can have a sort of like three quarter view like this and then um, over here, we're gonna go to the camera shape one, and this is what we get. Now, here's the thing. We were calibrating all the lights so they were working properly from the side view. And as you can see here on the front view, things are not looking good. So this is the kind of stuff that you need to change to make sure that you get the best possible results. So if you wanna have a front view like this, you're definitely gonna have to do another like light setup or just move some of the lights around so that the composition looks a little bit better. Let's go back to the to the the shot cam, which is the side view, which is the one that was looking very nice. And what I want to do is I want to add the the lights inside of this element. So to do that, I'm going to go to poly modeling. And I'm going to add two spheres. So this is going to be the first sphere. It's going to be like the light bulb, and I'm literally going to get the light bulb in there. Again, it's, it, it, that's literally the the light that's going to be producing the whole effect. And once we have this, we can duplicate this, position it on the other side. We could just mirror it as well. Let's combine those, delay history, first transformation. And I'm gonna go to Arnold, lights, and this is gonna be a mesh light. The exposure is gonna be quite high as well, 20, and I'm gonna make this yellow, like a, like a nice like yellow amber sort of uh, stuff. And when we do this, you can see now that the headlights are turned on. And we're getting this very, very interesting light, especially here on the front. You can see how these guys are actually emitting light through the glass and generating a very, very cool effect. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, the last thing I want to do, because I'm thinking this is a, a sort of like a commercial, right? So if I was going to do like a commercial, one of those that they play or, or they put on the on the streets where you just see the new the newest car. Let, let's imagine that they're bringing back this model. This is, by the way, the um the 170s model or something like that let's imagine they're going to bring it back but now it's going to be like electric right so it's going to be like super fancy super old school but modern in all of the interior things so um i'm guessing we can go with something like this like we can find that sort of like effect so that we can have some space over here some some words 
And then now I think the exposure on the mesh light is a little bit too much. Too much. Too much. Let's go to the spheres. To the mesh light right here. And let's bring this down to 15. So it's not as intense. There we go. And last but not least, uh, we can again go into our, our area light and bring it up a little bit more. I think our area light could be, let's set it up at zero, which was the, the beginning like default value. It's going to bring, oh, that's way too much light. Let's do minus one. There we go. So that things look a little bit more exposed, right? I still think that this color on the car looks too uh, gray. So I'm trying to see if we can like change this a little bit. There we go. So by bringing this code down, which is part of the flakes, we're like increasing something there. And I think a little bit more cream color might not be bad. There we go. That also gives me a, a sort of like slightly different texture. And that's it. Finally, we just go here to our imagers and we're going to add a denoiser optics. Wait for this to render and look at this. The more samples, of course, we give to this thing, the better it's going to be. So that's it, my friends. As you can see, this is, again, one of the advices that I can give you. Like, just, just take a look at the difference from the first render I did with this thing. This was, I'm going to give you the exact date. This was almost 10 years ago. And this was the side view. Look at this render. This was the side view that I did 10 years ago, which is not bad, but compared to this one, you can see the difference. So now I have a new portfolio piece. I have new things that I can share with everyone. And it's it's an old project, this project that I did 10 years ago, but I just went back, fixed some things, presented in a nicer way, and there we go. So hopefully this advice, not only the whole rendering thing, but using old assets of yours and giving them a new literally coat of paint and making them nicer will be a good advice for you in your career. Remember that if you want to learn all about the 3D world and everything, we have our Discord channel, our Instagram channel, Facebook, like Twitter, TikTok, everything. You can follow us down here in the description. And we just released our newest course, which is the weapon creation course. I'm not going to play the commercial right now, but if you want to see it, make sure to jump into one of the past videos from today or from this week's, and you're going to see the intro video to, I'm just going to show you very quickly the cool axe here. For those of you that haven't seen it, where it is, where it is. Uh, 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 um, give me just one second. I promise I'm not going to take long. This is a problem with having so many, so many things. There we go. So this right here is the our latest premium course. If you want to learn how to do this, make sure to check the link down here. And that's it, my friends. Thank you very much. Also, let me know in the comments what other things would you like to see here in the channel, and I'll be happy to record some videos for you. That's it for now. Have a great week, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.